One of my favorite things in the world to do is watch Friends. I know it's been off for years and years. It's not even around, but I still find myself binge watching old episodes. And I was thinking about this today and thinking it's the predictability of the friends in the circle, right? You have Chandler with his quirkiness, Monica with her type A of just everything has to be so neat and tidy and organized. It's Phoebe's ability to make you laugh at her silly songs. Ross always comes in with those smart comments and Joey and him and his food, like it is just so hilarious. And of course, Rachel, she just brings everybody together and it's just such this beautiful, cohesive team of people. And it's why I wanted to come on and share with you today that I have an opportunity for you to find your friends in the content creation space. So if you are thinking about creating your first or your next digital course, I don't want you to miss this opportunity because Amy Porterfield just opened the doors for registration for her course, Confident Bootcamp. And I'm actually offering a special bonus for anyone that registers for the course. Course Confident Bootcamp through my special link. So I want you to go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register. That's crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And what you're going to find when you get there is I have this special bonus private podcast series. It's called Money Mindset for Creators. So I want you to go register for Amy's bootcamp download the podcast and immediately start listening to it because what this training is set up to do is to help you get your mind right about monetizing your content, making money so that you can fuel your content creation dreams. So go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp to register for course confident. And I cannot wait for you to find your friends and find the people that will be there for you. Do you see what I did there? Yeah. Nice little friends segue connection. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash Amy dash bootcamp. And I cannot wait to see you inside. Okay. Let's get into today's episode. Are you an online entrepreneur looking for the greatest tips, strategies, tools, and resources? Of course you are, right? Like, who isn't? If you're trying to grow a business online, you always are looking for the new trends and the things that will help your business move faster, more effectively. Well, I'm excited to participate in this year's BC Stack 2020. This is a program that bundles 65 different digital marketing how-to products and masterclasses into one stack. You're going to find topics like Facebook ads, copywriting, Instagram, WordPress, SEO, social media, YouTube, podcasting, Pinterest, email analytics, and more. So I am so excited for this happening. It's coming on July 19th. 2020. So mark your calendars and get ready because it's going to be exciting. Have you been thinking how incredible it would be if you had someone to answer all of your podcast marketing questions? Oh my gosh, you are in for a treat today because I have an incredible interview to share with you. So let's get right to it. Welcome to The Profit Podcast, where we teach entrepreneurs how to start, launch, and market their podcast. I'm your host, Crystal Profit, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thanks for hanging out with me today, because if you've been trying to figure out the world of podcasting, think of this show as the time-saving shortcut you've been looking for. So let's get right to it, shall we? Okay, so y'all already know how much I love to geek out on podcasting. Or if you're brand new here, you're going to find it out pretty quickly. Once you hit that subscribe button and you hear me in your earbuds all the time, you're going to say, I don't know anybody who is obsessed with podcasting as much as Crystal. But today I want to talk to you about something I'm equally obsessed with, and that is marketing. 
Did you know that that's what I went to school for? Yeah, I have my bachelor's degree in marketing and it was just the one thing I was so drawn to as a young adult and it's what still gets me so excited. I love it when you come to me with questions about how can I get my audience to pay attention or how can I grow my audience or what are some other fun things to try? So instead of just me giving you my tips and strategies, I wanted to reach out to another podcast marketing expert, so I invited Albin Brook, who's the head of marketing at Buzzsprout, to come onto the podcast. We actually did a live stream on Facebook and on YouTube, and it turned out incredible. It was such an awesome interview, and I cannot wait to hear what you think about this episode, but let me tell you a little bit about Albin. So he has written a podcasting guide that has been read over a million times. Yes, I said a million. Like he knows his stuff and he knows what he's talking about whenever it comes to marketing and especially with marketing your podcast. So he also co-hosts two podcasts, Buzzcast, which is a weekly podcast put out by Buzzsprout, and How to Start a Podcast, another podcast by Buzzsprout. He lives in Jacksonville Beach, Florida with his wife and daughter, and I just can't wait for y'all to get to know Albin a little bit more. So here's my conversation with Albin Brooke. Well, hey there, everybody. I hope that y'all are having a fantastic day because I am super excited for what's about to go down. So if you are brand new here, I just want to remind you that I am Crystal Prophet, and I am so excited that you're here watching this broadcast today or listening to this podcast episode because you are in for a real treat. So I am so excited to call Buzzsprout my podcast hosting home, and I've been with them for about two years now, and I am so excited because I reached out to their head of marketing, and I said, hey, can we do a little chat about podcast marketing? Because I know so many people in this community have questions about podcast marketing. And he said, well, sure, Crystal, I'd love to do it. And so I'm so excited for Alvin Brooke to be joining us here today. So Alvin, if you're ready to go, I'm going to pull you in and we're going to get started. So are you ready? How's All right. it going, Crystal? There we go. It's good. How are you, Alvin? <laughs> Doing well. Thanks for having me. Yes, this is so fun. So this is actually the first time um, I'm streaming in a few different places. I've done live broadcasts before, but I'm like, hey, like, let's just try something fun. And I was glad that you were up for it because this is just going to be just so much fun. So I'm really excited. So can you tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you do and all the cool things about Buzzsprout? (laughs) Yeah, sure. Um, So I'm the head of marketing for Buzzsprout. Uh, in a former life, I was a lawyer and then I switched over to tech and uh, came to work at Buzzsprout. And what we do is we're the easiest way to start a professional podcast. So we try to give you all the tools from hosting to promotion tools, which I'm sure we'll talk a lot about today, to stats and analytics, um, anything you need to help make you a successful podcaster. And uh, you know, our whole thing is we always want to be honest with you. So if it's somebody who's podcasting isn't the right fit, um, hopefully we can you know direct you in the right way. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. Well, I have to tell you, Alvin, it's so funny. I actually just got a comment from Kay. She says, I feel like <laughs> I know Alvin. I watch all the videos. <laughs> so Hi, so Kay. Well, you, we know each other now. <laughs> that's awesome. So if you aren't familiar with uh with Buzzsprout, and I just have to tell you, hands down, I chose y'all as the number one resource for me because y'all have just you have podcasts and videos and just all kinds of blogs, newsletters, all kinds of amazing resources that I am just so excited about. So can you tell me a little bit about kind of the back end of what y'all's dream? Because I know like y'all have a dream team. I love Kevin. I've met Marshall, Travis. All of you guys are so incredible in your showing up for your members of your community with a servant's heart. So can you kind of give us like a little bit about like, what is your overall mission whenever it comes to podcasting and just having like 
just being the number one podcast platform, is that y'all's goal or is it just to, to be the best at what y'all already do? Well, I think we, we recently, we do this like internal book club and we read different books and kind of try to, you know, help each other get better as a team. And one thing I always thought was we always were trying to like hire the best people who had the most skills and all this stuff. And that never resonated with me when we heard that. But then we recently read a book and it was talking so much about people being hungry and really caring. And Kevin has said a lot of times, um, he was like, you know, to have someone who cares a lot matters a lot more than someone who maybe has the skills because someone who has cares will learn the skills and somebody who has the skills and doesn't care will leave as soon as they can, uh, you know, clock out for the day. And yeah. so our whole mentality is you got to hire people that care. Yeah. And what that means for Buzzsprout is that we actually care about your podcast. When someone's writing in, you're not kind of belittling the podcast going, oh, is that even really important? But you're going, yeah, this really means a lot to somebody. And what can we do as a team to partner with you to make you successful? We we had somebody who moved, a pretty big podcaster who moved from another platform. And we asked him at one point, you know, what makes us different? How would you describe it? He goes, oh, the fact that you guys even care to ask that is the difference. And wow. so that is kind of, we kind of taken that and adopted it as um, all the educational materials is just like, we want to help people be successful so that you can either figure out that it's the right thing for you or that you can find something else that's going to work well for you and your business. That's awesome. And I have to tell you, as like I said, I've been part of y'all's community for over two years now. And I'm just like, I feel that in every single part of the process from y'all constantly innovating and looking for ways that you can help your communities, not ways to put you guys on top, but how can you make the entire experience? So I just wanted to make sure and that y'all got lots of kudos for being <laughs> such an amazing platform because I hear it all the time. People are like, Crystal, thank you so much for introducing me to Buzzsprout. And I'm like, yeah, I'm glad I found them first. And I'm not going to tell you to <laughs> go over there because they'll answer all of your questions that I can't answer because that's that's kind of my thing is I love to teach entrepreneurs how to podcast, but I'll just be honest, I'm not the brains behind so many of the technical questions that are out there. So if you're up for it, I actually have some questions from the community. I kind of pulled the audience first and I said, all right, I'm going to have the head of marketing all at right. Buzzsprout. What are your questions? So are you good with that? I'm ready. Let's do it. So, so we're going to do some rapid fire questions. Yeah, we're going to do some rapid fire questions from All the right. community. And then I have uh, an extra special something, some rapid fire questions that I know a lot of our audience, like they're already thinking or they've been asking me and I don't know the answer. So I'm going to shoot those at you in a little bit. But right now I want to start with two questions or um, questions from two different people. So Dan asked, based on what you've seen in marketing to podcasters and talking to them what is trending right now and why? Being a woman in business comes with its own unique set of challenges, but also so many opportunities. We get ahead by leaning in to what makes us different from business as usual. I'm Samantha Hartley, host of Profitable Joyful Consulting, inviting you to a special six-episode series exploring the experience of being a woman in business. You want to hear from women consultants who've hit a million dollars, who sell six-figure engagements, or who've broken their own revenue ceilings? Yeah, those are my clients, and they'll be sharing too. Join me for six must-listen episodes that tackle key challenges for women consultants. Follow Profitable Joyful Consulting on your favorite podcast app. Um, hmm. what do you mean by what is, is that to marketers? Like what's actually working and selling people on podcasting or is that more of a, how are podcasters positioning themselves? I think it's, I think it's both. So I know Dan, he is actually, he's a member of uh, my potty people community and uh, he is a marketer himself. He has the pro growth marketing podcast. So I think it is a two part question and asking like, you know, we're, we're trying to turn people on to podcasting in general, but also as a podcaster, how do we, you know, really make something stand out? So I know that he's a new, a newer podcaster, if that helps. Okay. So from the podcasting side, just getting your podcast out to the world, 
a lot of other types of media, YouTube, uh, social media, you know, our far extension, like maybe like a TikTok, they all have these platforms that have been built and it does two things for them. One is it gives this platform control over all the content, but it also gives them a really easy way to surface good content to new viewers or listeners, um, to a big audience. Podcasting, we have it intentionally as podcasters said, we're going to step back from that. We want to control this a bit more. Uh, we don't want to be like the employee. We want to be the owner of something. And so when we go and do it on our own, the part that we don't get the double-edged sword of this is the audience is harder to find. But once we connect with our audience, they will be here long-term. Yeah. So what that leads you to is um, we need to leverage all these other platforms for what's good about them which is the growth aspect, and then bring people back to subscribe to our shows because we're in this for the long game. A hundred people subscribe to your podcast is much more valuable than a thousand people on a YouTube channel that can change overnight and you can lose everybody. Um, So what, you know, some practical tips for that. Uh, When we, you know, you see those things, the moving things on social media, the visual sound bites or audiograms, those are exceptionally good at getting people to engage with your podcast because you're meeting people where they're at. They're on Facebook or Instagram with a piece of content that's designed for them. So it fits the parameters. It works the way they expect. And then it gives them a taste of your podcast. If there's 30 seconds out of your show that's engaging and really valuable and people listen to it, they'll go, oh, this sounds like something I would be interested in. And so they move back. So it's always, I would say, goes back to leveraging other communities, other platforms to bring people to your podcast because podcasts don't naturally grow on themselves. No, that's great. And I actually, um, now that you say that about, um, you know, sound bites and audiograms, there was another question that someone asked recently, and I think it was in the Buzzsprout group, which if y'all are not in there, there is a Buzzsprout Facebook group. Uh, what is it like 12,000 people now? I, I know it's at least 10,000. It, it's a party. Okay. <laughs> like it is a party in the Buzzsprout Facebook group, but somebody asked in there, what's a good length? So if someone were taking your advice and they're like, okay, I want to start getting on this bandwagon, but I don't really know where to get started. Is there a certain amount of time that you've seen that works best for any podcast? Sure. So just for those sound bites, you want to get some kind of a hook in the first 15 seconds. Okay. Um, the experience, and you've done this plenty of times, you know, we all have, you're scrolling through Facebook and we're so used to seeing kind of, I don't know about for you, but I always get the weirdest videos and you kind of, it starts on its own and you look at it for three seconds you go, this isn't for me and you move on. Right. Well, multiply that by thousands and that's the kind of engagement that you're probably getting. Well, much better it would be um, as soon as you can hook someone so that they can go, oh, this might be for me and then listen. So you really want to get some good, something really positive in the first few seconds, um, 15 max. And then maybe you have 30, 45 seconds for a complete thought, but really not much more than that because this is just a trailer. You know, this is just, we're trying to hook someone, say, this is a podcast that would have some valuable insights for you. Why don't you come leave whatever you're doing, go to this website and subscribe. So it's a pretty big ask in the world of just something, you know, ephemeral on Facebook. Uh, So we want to be as quick to the point as possible. That's so good. And I'm actually, I'm going to jump back to, so I'm a huge fan of the Buzzcast podcast as well. And I'm thinking back to a conversation. I think it was last week's episode where y'all were talking about the possibility of Apple having the text of your podcast. Eventually one day, like in a perfect world, we would have, you know, a podcast playing the text, like it was lyrics to a song. So how far out in the future do you think that that would be? Are we talking like that could be a possibility in the next 24 months, in the next 12 months, six years? Like how long, how far off do you think we are from that kind of technology? I mean, the tech is all there. There's nothing that would be new, truly new about. I mean, um, we already see it in music apps, right? You can do it inside of Apple, Apple Music. 
And so we all know how to do it. We've, um, at least internally, I know we, the way we timestamp all of the, um, transcripts, we would be able to serve that up in a digestible format. The next piece is because, uh, uh, podcasting is this open ecosystem, right. you just need to get people to support it. So as soon as there's some podcast apps that say, Hey, we want to be the first one to do it. Um, Buzzproud is on the other end, ready to give you all of that information. Right. So if anybody here works on podcasting apps and wants to do that, definitely yeah. reach out to us because, um, yeah, I think if, you, if we can get some people excited about it, that may not be, you know, too long before that's reality. Yeah, that's really cool. That was just that was just a selfish question because I wanted to know that. I'm I mean, you're here. I'm gonna pick your brain about stuff. So for sure. <laughs> but Dan's follow-up question was uh what would be recommendations to truly stand out besides the obvious marketing, just showing up and promoting your stuff? Do you have any tips for something that's a little bit out of the ordinary when promoting your podcast? I mean there's so many tips that I are in the ordinary. So, but I don't want to miss them. So I'm, maybe I'll just hit some of the ones I know Dan probably already knows consistency, mm -hmm. um, being able to actually build a relationship with your audience. That is the whole point of podcasting. And it's what you want to keep doubling down on the ability to um, interact with the same listener week after week for years. That's the compounding mm -hmm. returns that you want. And most audience growth through podcasting is, uh, we're chatting and you say, Hey, do you know a good marketing podcast? And I pull out my phone and I flip through and I tell you, and a lot of podcast growth is done person to person. So you really want to make a show that is valuable enough. That's unique enough that your listeners are going out of their way to tell people about it. So an example for me was I recently listened to New York Times did a podcast called Rabbit Hole, and it was all about these like weird internet subcultures. And it was good enough that when I, I binged the whole thing, but I was actively texting friends going, dude, here's a link, download this out. right now. You <laughs> will like this because yeah. New York Times doesn't have the ability to text the people who will love it. But I know pe some people are like, oh, this is definitely in your wheelhouse. And yeah. so you've got to make a show that has... um. I mean, we definitely think about this just in generally in marketing. You want your mes message to be as simple as possible for your value proposition to be so clear that nobody has a heart. It's never difficult to articulate what a product is or who it's for. Right. Buzzsprout is our tools for podcasting for anyone who wants to start a professional podcast. And if you're selling your podcast, you would say, Hey, this is my marketing podcast, but maybe the more focused it can be, the better, because then it becomes a very clear and discernible audience uh, who will enjoy it. So yeah. now maybe some stuff that's a little bit outside, you know, normal podcast marketing. Obviously, you want to be sharing those audiograms, um, engaging with communities that would enjoy your podcast. Um, I love doing this. We do this in all of our marketing, it's just answering people's questions. And so that may mean go on to Quora. Um, let's say that we have a, a marketing podcast and I've got a few episodes about affiliate marketing and how to make money online. Go on to Quora and start searching affiliate marketing and find somebody who's saying, hey, I was thinking about applying for Amazon affiliates. And here's my question. Go ahead and answer it in good detail and then lead a little bread leave a breadcrumb back to your podcast, say, and if you'd like to learn more, I discussed it fully with this guest on my podcast. And if most of those will only lead to a couple people, but some of those will really grow. And all of a sudden you now have a nice stream of people coming and checking out your podcast. And so kind of leaving those breadcrumbs around the internet can be a really great way to do that. But you've always got to come back to giving real discernible value up front. Um, that first answer has to be excellent. Uh, no, one that, awesome. Go ahead. Oh, one idea that I saw, and I just love this one. Um, I have some friends in town that do a comic book podcast. And they told me that when we rolled out the new stats so that you could see everyone in different locations around the world, they said, oh, that's so funny. We see like that big group in this place in Germany and a big group here. And he, like these big cities. 
Mm -hmm. that had like pockets. And I was like, what, what was that from? They went, Oh, well we went there. And whenever they would travel overseas because they were a comic book podcast, mm -hmm. they would go to all the comic book stores and drop off a stack of uh, business cards and just say, Hey, would you mind if he sat in your comic book shop and people could listen to the show? And people are really into comic books. We're like, yeah, we'd love it. And so for years, there's been these stacks of business cards all over Europe where they traveled that people pick them up. And then the number one way people listen to your show is they tell friends. So you get 10 people to listen at one comic book shop and they tell all their friends. And so now they see these like clusters That's all crazy. through everywhere that they went on their trip. That's crazy. Well, you want to talk about a very unique way, you know, for a marketing strategy that, you know, cause I'm sitting here thinking business cards, what are you talking about? You know, everyone's like, who does business cards anymore? That is such a great like idea for such a niche topic. Like, especially if you're going in, if you're exchanging something that is a physical thing, like what a fantastic idea to include your information. I know another one I'm thinking of is putting like your most recent episode at the bottom of your email signature. Like that's another great way just to get people that you may would never, it would feel awkward to tell them, Hey, listen to my latest episode in the middle of the email. But if it's in the bottom signature, you know, it's not gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt anything. Yeah, it's a great idea. <laughs> I mean, this one is one that I might categorize in the, like maybe feels obvious, but it's sometimes not obvious to everybody is whatever your show is about. You know, if your show is about I don't know, golden retrievers, you want to reach out to everybody who is kind of like an influencer in that space. Somebody who's running the biggest Facebook golden retriever group, uh, the best breeders, the people who are showing golden retrievers at the dog shows. And, you know, one, you're trying to invite them onto the show. So they actually have some ownership and that they might be inclined to share your podcast, but just creating relationships with these people and saying, Hey, and I would love it if you would share my show with your audience and see ways that you can partner with them. I mean, there's a uh, really big Supreme court podcast. Their entire growth strategy seemed to just be, they partnered with the best Supreme court blog. And they said, Hey, why don't we, we do the episodes and you put them on the blog and then you can have commentary on your blog. And it worked great for both parties and they both grew their audiences. So finding ways that you could partner with somebody else um, who may be interested in the same things, but they may be a YouTuber and you're a podcaster, or they might be writing books. Um, those are excellent people to partner with. No, I love that. I love the collaboration. And I feel like with podcasting, it's just such a community of collaboration. I don't feel like this sense of competition of like, oh, you know, like this is, these are my people. Like, no, there's plenty, there's plenty to go around, especially like I listen to probably five or six different marketing podcasts that they don't pit themselves against each other. They're hey, like, hey, I listen to you on this podcast and now you're on this one. And then now they're guesting on this one. It's just this like, big ecosystem of people that, you know, it's just, it's just so much fun. I just love it so much, <laughs> but I want to move on to the next question. So Polly had the question. She said, how can I reach beyond just your connections on social media? Like how can I actually expand outside of, you know, what she has currently. And I think that you kind of just touched on that with collaborating with other people that have similar interests or have similar audiences, but did you want to add anything else to that? Yeah. I, I mean, with any of that stuff where you're just plugging into communities that probably already care, you really don't, you know, go back to that golden retriever podcast. If someone came to me and tried to convince me to listen to it, unless it was like my wife or a great friend, I wouldn't listen, want to listen to it right. because even though I really like the person I'd go, well, it's not a podcast for me. You know, right. I don't have a golden retriever, but there's people out there who golden retrievers are in their top five interests. And mm -hmm. that's an easy sell. So you've got to get in front of the people who, when they hear the subtitle to the podcast, the title of the podcast, they see that they go, Oh, that's for me. Right. So you need to get in front of them. So Facebook groups, finding people. Um, there's a way that you can just go into Amazon and find people who publish books recently and you can filter down by section. So you could go through and find all the authors 
who have spoken about your topic and published a book in the last six months, try to interview them all. And because they are already becoming known as experts in your field, and now you can have them on the podcast, get great content. They're probably inclined to come on the podcast because they want to sell their book. And then when they're talking to people to go, oh, I was just on this great show and they will share it. Um, it's That's- just so anything you can do to plug into uh, new communities that already exist, that have already formed is a great way to grow. That's so smart. I had, I'm actually, I'm going to write that down whenever we're done here, (laughs) because that's super smart. I actually hadn't even thought about it because you're you're right. I mean, a lot of people that have like approached me about being on the podcast, they have an event, a program, a book, they have something going on. So really tapping into those people. So getting outside of your comfort zone a little bit, like reaching beyond your current audience, but really talking to those people who have the influence are starting to have the influence in that community that you're trying to be a part of. Very smart. Okay. So Polly's uh, next question is, should the same post be shared on all of your outlets? And I think that she's talking about social media. So if she were to be promoting her podcast, does she need to change it up from LinkedIn to Twitter to Facebook to Instagram? Like what, what does your marketing hat say on that one? Um, optimally, someday you're going to want to be on all of those platforms. Right. And when you're on all of them, because they are all very different, the cultures of each one are different the format, the, I mean, what you're going to share on Instagram, even what you shared on Instagram two years ago is very different than now with doing stories over just posts. You want to do unique things for each one. But what I really don't want you to do is to start doing a podcast. And now you have a part-time job creating social media assets for it. Mm. That's pretty silly. What would be much better would be to pick one and pick the one that you naturally type in when you sit down on your computer and you're just looking for 10 minutes to do something and let your mind kind of zone out. Are you an- ending up on Instagram or Twitter? Or are you going over to Facebook or posting on TikTok? Wherever you're going, that's where your main focus should be for your podcast because you already understand that culture you, you, just intuitively. And then it's so much better to be great on one social media platform than to be just kind of engaged a little bit with all of them. Um, I don't really enjoy it. I really, I actually don't like it at all, but LinkedIn is surprisingly good. So if you're somebody who's kind of got a podcast focused on a bit more professional things, LinkedIn is so desperate for content as a <laughs> platform that they will promote good content so hard. So Facebook is already always kind of keeping you down a little bit because they have so much stuff to share pe- with people. LinkedIn is looking for it. So if you put out a great post or two, you may see yourself getting, that might get exposed to a lot more people than on other platforms. So just wherever you feel comfortable, that's where you want to focus. No, that's so good. And I I totally agree. I think that overwhelm can set in pretty quickly, especially in the first few months of your podcast, you're still just trying to figure out what you're doing and then yeah. throw, oh, I got to be on all of these social media platforms every single day. I got to be responding and doing all these things. I totally agree with just pick one, pick the one that you're good at and the one that you gravitate towards the most and stick with it. So that's so good. Well, I have a few just a general uh, podcast marketing questions for you specifically, okay. not just uh, okay. in the industry, but what's your favorite uh, podcast tool out there? So we don't even have to talk about just marketing because there's a few tools within Buzzsprout that are my favorite, but I wanted to hear what is your favorite tool or your podcast tool out there? Um. So it felt a little self-serving for me to say anything that was a Buzzsprout product. So I, I might, my mind instantly went to things that were not ours. Um, somebody we just partnered with and we built an integration with is Descript. And Descript has this like, it's just a totally new way of thinking about editing. So the first round of edi- editors in the world were basically all these editors who were built for music. And then when we realized people wanted to talk into microphones, they went, oh, yeah, we can do that too. But if you're using GarageBand or Audacity, you notice there's a lot of things for like adjusting pitch and things that may not have made sense um, for voice. Then there's podcast editors like Hindenburg that are all focused on your voice 
but it's still using the sound waves. That's the way we're editing. The script went back to completely to first principles and said, well, what often happens for really big editing jobs, like what NPR would do is they transcribe all the audio. Then they kind of build the story together. And then they start all the clip, the actually editing everything together. So they said, what if we transcribed it for you? And then you just edit the transcript. And then we make all of the audio edits for you. And it's just this kind of mind blowing change to the way that you um, edit a podcast. And it's, you know, I was an English major in college. So I spent a lot of time, you know, thinking about how stories fit together. And the script really frees you up from going, oh, how painful will it be to take these 12 clips and move them over there just to get this one little thing right? Well, the script, you just control C, control V, you move it, and they, you, they do all that editing in the background. So it's a tool that I've edited with recently, and I think it's very, very cool. That's awesome. And so with the integration that y'all have, uh, it still does the transcript. Like how to, so tell me, I guess, walk me through the process. So you would just upload your audio file into Buzzsprout or do you upload it into Descript? How does that work? So you could record right into Descript. Oh, uh, wow. Just click that record button and we would have our conversation. While we would be doing that, Descript would uh, give me a transcript. It would actually transcribe the entire conversation. Then I go through and I would just start filtering out parts that were boring, moving sections Mm -hmm. around. And they've got some very cool tools. I feel like now I'm just selling the script for them. So, (laughs) (laughs) but they've got some that I went through and just said, Hey, take out any time I say, um, and they find like 35 times I said, um, and you just have this seamless, it's just gone. They just pull it out of all, all of them. And like, I would never do that if I was editing it myself. But as soon as I'm like, oh, just take them out, it sounds a lot better. So you make all your changes. You can make, you could add intro music, all of that. And then you just go to publish and you click a Buzzsprout icon. And we not only take the audio, we also get the transcript because we're really a really big push to get everybody to start using transcripts for their podcast just because there's so many um valuable use cases for transcripts. That is so crazy. And I I have actually, I've seen the tutorial of how it all works, but I think you might, I didn't know you could record directly in the script. So there's going to be a tutorial coming soon that I'm, it's going to be me (laughs) trying it out and seeing how this is actually working. Cause this, that is super cool. And I'm really excited to try that out. But so I'm going to answer this question because if you don't want to sound self-serving, I will tell you what my favorite tool is that Buzzsprout offers is the magic mastering has just been an absolute game changer for me. And I've told all this before because it's just, I used to, my process for pro- producing my podcast involved taking my audio, going to Auphonic, uploading it, making sure it sounded amazing. And then I'd have to download that and then put it up in Buzzsprout. So it added an extra 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how long my audio file was to the production of my podcast. Whereas now, as soon as I'm done, I hit this little button and it's, and it's just there and it happens. So kudos to y'all. Like y'all have done such an incredible job. And uh, if anybody's thinking about trying it out, I highly recommend you at least test it because I know that y'all worked really hard to make that happen. And what's, what's been the response that users have had for magic mastering? Um, exceptionally good. Uh, you know, there's, you don't want to like, um, you know, get too excited by your own hype sometimes. Right. So we're like, this is really like, we've for years been thinking about this idea and we selling ourselves on it. And then the big launch day comes and you're hoping everyone agrees. And with magic mastering, it's been almost universal that everybody was really excited and really enjoyed it. Um, it's pretty expensive for us to do, so we had to charge people for it. And we haven't had anybody say anything besides great things like, oh, I loved right. it and I want to keep using this because of the it's a pretty big time savings. Like our whole goal with everything is you shouldn't have to be a full time podcaster to have a podcast. Right. Um, for most people, it should be a couple hours a week. You put together a show, you upload it, and now it's out to the world. You go and you do some 
marketing on your one channel, maybe you do the blog post and you, you leave it. It shouldn't okay. become this full-time, all-consuming project. We don't even have right. to be a tech guru to start a podcast. Right. Exactly. Well, y'all have done an awesome job. Well, um, so this is a question I was just thinking about at, right before I was like jotting down all my questions, making sure I had everything. And then I started thinking about, I know that this has been something a lot of my podcast community has wondered, is there one particular platform or directory where we should be sending listeners who want to hear our show? Because I know I have like my preferred player, actually, I love good pods. Good pods is like, I don't even go to Apple podcasts anymore. I don't go anywhere else. I love the functionality of good pods and how I can see what other people are listening to and I can give them, you know, ratings and I can put comments and I love the social aspect of that, but no one else knows what that is. They're like good, good pods. I just know how to get to Apple podcasts because it's on my phone. So if someone's brand new and they're like, where am I supposed to send people? What would you tell them? I mean, I think you actually gravitating towards good pods is a great thing. So I know Ken and JJ over there who are building good pods and they're like the kindest people in the world and they are really, really going about it the right way. So they built this incredible app and then they slowly brought people onto the platform and they have a lot of really big names yes. um, who are on there. And so I was talking to them and they were like, show, you know, we were going through and I saw Kim Kardashian. I was like, oh, so that's like a, you know, that's like a placeholder. And they're like, no, she's really on here. Yeah. And it's like a friend of a friend. And I was like, what? I'm like, why aren't you telling people that? Like, hey, come yes. on and like recommend some podcast to Kim Kardashian. <laughs> yes. But there's, it's a cool place. It's obvious, it's growing a lot. And if you could get kind of a critical mass there, um, they were telling me they can see a podcast start with one person, listen to it on by themselves. And then they post about it. And then two of their friends start listening to it. And That's they so post awesome. about it. And then three people listen to it from that. And they said, we can actually chart like the growth of this show oh my from person to person because it's the player, but it's also that community aspect. Yes. So I think that's a great place. Um, I use uh, Overcast to listen to podcasts. Um, as far as directories, I mean, the one place that really ma is like, head and shoulders above, and especially in the U S is Apple podcasts. Um, you, you kind of want to cover all your bases, get into the 10 or so main directories and all those are pretty easy, you know, click through on bus route. Uh, but yeah, just send people where you're going to be. So if you're going to be on good pods, send everyone there and engage your community in kind of a, a fun, unique way. Yeah, for sure. And I know, I think it was, uh, Simon Sinek. I always say his mm -hmm. name wrong. Simon Sinek, however you say his name. I saw he has a podcast going on there. And I was actually, I started following Tom from Buzzsprout and he, it was so funny because I hadn't gotten on there in about a week and he had listened to a, uh, it was Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe had a brand new podcast and it, he was interviewing Chris Pratt, who I love both of those guys. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that Rob Lowe had a podcast. So I went and listened to it because Tom had listened to it on there. So I love the ripple effect and the expansion that is totally possible on Good Pod. So everybody, you have to go check it out if you haven't listened to, or if you haven't checked it out yet, but y'all also did a Buzzcast interview with the founder of Good Pods, right? It was JJ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'll link to all that in the show notes. But yeah. Alvin, this has been, oh, go ahead. I was just, one final point for Good Pods is you think Facebook people are going there and they're just kind of going to waste time. They're engaging there saying, I don't really care if it's my, you know, my new, new photos of my friend's kid or if it's the political post from my uncle or what it is, I just want a bunch of content. But if someone's going to good pods, they have a specific purpose. It's that they really care about podcasts and they're always are itching to find a new show. And so if you are pulling more of your listeners to good pods, then you're going to be overrepresented in one of the few places that people are going, Hey, how do I find new shows? So good pods, um, pod chaser is another thing for that being able to just kind of saturate and market and uh, people are going there to look for new podcasts and they can find yours as well. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And I'm going to link to Pod Chaser and Good Pods in the show notes. So if anybody wants to go check those out, those are fantastic resources. But I had uh, messaged Alvin before our interview and I said, okay, y'all have been talking about all kinds of stats and amazing things on Bud- Buzzcast and a lot of y'all's other resources. So I said, can I do some rapid fire questions about things that I know our community members want to know? So how do you feel about some rapid fire questions? I'm ready. I hope, hopefully I know all the answers. So I'll do my <laughs> I, best. I think that you do. I think that you do. Cause I've actually, I've heard these on uh, conversations that y'all have had on Buzzcast, but I wanted to bring that information to the Profit Podcast because I just know that people don't geek out as much on podcasting as I do, which it's fine. It's okay. But these are actually questions that I see people ask all the time. And I don't always have this information because y'all have so many users on Buzzsprout, so y'all can give them better answers. So my first one is, in looking at all podcasters across Buzzsprout, how long is an average episode? So I'll give this answer, but I have to give the caveat first that this is descriptive, not prescriptive. This is just what the answer is. This doesn't tell you to do anything. Right. Um, So you don't want to, the answer is about 38 minutes, Okay. but that does not end over the years. We've actually seen that number trending downwards, but that does not mean that if you have a 20 minute podcast, that's good. Go ahead and try to talk it up for 18 more minutes. Or if you have a great conversation at 45, let's trim it down. It just means it would be almost as silly to do that as if I was saying, how long is a good piece of writing? Well, War right. and Peace is a th- is thousand pages, and I wrote a really funny tweet that was twelve words. So, like, there's a pretty big range for good written content, and there's a pretty good range for good spoken content. So, just follow your heart, do the best you can to get good content in there. But thirty eight minutes. Such great advice. No, that's such great advice. So, uh, this is kind of this is a very open ended question, and I know that you'll take this and run with it. But how many downloads is good? <laughs> this, this is yeah. how I get it. Asked These are not the rapid time. fire. These good. have clear answers, but they need the caveat. So <laughs> average podcaster gets a bit over a hundred downloads per episode. Okay. But I know ultra successful podcasters who are getting somewhere in the range of like 150 downloads. Now, how are they ultra successful if they're barely above average? Well, because it does, it really depends on what you're talking about. Because a lot of people, they try to go really broad appeal and it's a comedy podcast that talks about celebrities. And so everyone's probably interested in that. Um, and then there's people who get really, really focused. And so I'm thinking of an example of a podcaster in Buzzsprout who helped set up call centers. And so he just told, he just said everything he needed to know about setting up a call center. And he said he was he gave us his numbers and it was like 150 plays an episode. So I was like, Ooh, he's not getting a ton, but he's reaching the 150 people in the nation that really matter. The CFO right. who's going, we've got to outsource this. Who could we get to be involved? And then they found the podcast and he became the expert. So he was getting, he said he got paid speaking gigs. He had wow. people reaching out. He said people that he'd been reaching out to for years are now coming to him asking, um, to, you know, have a discussion. And so whatever your goals are, uh, those are going to inform what you need to get as far as downloads to be successful. (laughs) Um, but if you're just trying to do something like advance your career and just start by teaching, well, getting five listeners could be pretty valuable. Just getting 10 of the right people to hear you, or just for you to spend the time to start articulating your thoughts on your profession, that could be what was really valuable. So the numbers go all over the place. Um, once you get over a hundred, you're kind of in the top, you know, the top half. And uh, the really successful podcasters, they're not doing anything totally different than you. What they're really doing is they've just been here longer. And so yeah. they started. You know, if you look at a lot of the really big podcasts, they started in 2006, and they've just kept at it. And if you keep at it for a year, you're already over half of the podcasts in existence now will have already, you know, shut down and you'll be one of the few that's continuing. So the longer you podcast, the better you will get 
and the more value you will receive from it. That's so good. Such this is definitely advice. not rapid fire anymore. No, it's no, fine. It's fine because I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here just thinking like this is everything that I would say, but I love that it's it's coming from you because y'all. I mean, you see this information. You see what happens, and y'all have been doing this longer than I have. So I love to hear y'all's perspective of how this works. And when you say a hundred, does that mean in the first seven days? Does that mean over thirty days, ninety days? What does that number reflect? Um, 90 days is the window that we typically okay. use. Um, but you, you get a good feel for where it's going to end up after about a week. You can a kind week. of see the trajectory go, okay, this episode really hit something. Um, you know, we, we had a doctor one time reach out and he's like, something's happened to the podcast because my numbers have gone crazy. A bot's got it. And we dug into it and we were like, it's all coming from one episode. It, like everyone starts on this episode and then they branch out. And we looked into it and years ago, he'd done an episode on the Ebola epidemic oh. and it was before all of the Ebola outbreak happened. And so as soon as he, you know, people started searching Ebola, well, he already had the evergreen content out there and everyone found it and was like, oh, this is great stuff. And so then they started listening. So anything you can do to make your episodes um, have the possibility of being really successful later on, you know, don't create content that is done is only for this week, create content that will be valuable for years so that people will find it for years. No, that's so good. That's so good. Yes. And this is great information. So how often are people publishing new podcast episodes? Is it once a week or more than that? What are y'all seeing? The average ends up being somewhere like between eight and 11 days. But okay. what you want to do, but that's skewed by a lot of people who, you know, kind of fall off the wagon for a couple of weeks and they're like, oh, sorry, I missed it. You want to do once a week. Okay. And it's not that there's something magical about that, except we're doing a few things. We're building a habit for you so that you can, are consistently putting out content. And then we are helping build a habit for your listeners to actually engage with your content. So I know, um, at least when I was driving into work every day, right. Monday morning, I had this, a, a podcast was always there. Thursday, when I drove home, there was a podcast there. Wednesday morning, there was a podcast there. There was different podcasts in different parts of the week because I knew when they released and they would be there for my commute. So I would know what I was about to listen to. And the ability to kind of build yourself into somebody's Wednesday night workout or their Thursday walk or whatever it may be become pretty powerful because now there's actually kind of an ingrained habit for your listeners. So find a time of the week that makes sense for you and then try to be as consistent as possible. That's so good. Yeah. I always listen to the office ladies podcast every Wednesday when I work out. So I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. So what advice would you give to a brand new podcaster? Keep this one short, short and sweet, Albin. I'm challenging you. Just our publishing. Don't, awesome. don't make it, don't make it perfect. It won't be perfect. It can't be perfect. Many things in life, you have to be just doing it to get better. And podcasting is hundred percent one of those. So just start getting some episodes out. I love it. I love it. Okay. So for a dream podcast, what would be the dream podcast that you would absolutely love to be on? The dream podcast that I would want to be on is like a guest. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I am. I don't know. This is a good, good question. I feel like there's all these podcasts I really enjoy. They're a little like too intellectual for me. Like I'd be on their beats, totally nervous. <laughs> so, like I don't know. Some sort of big marketing podcast would probably be the places for me because I'd really enjoy it. Um, but I think I don't know about you, but there's so many big podcasts out there that I enjoy that. If uh, they called and said, hey, we want you on for an interview, I'd be like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for this. <laughs> well, what about a dream podcast guest? Who would you love to sit down and interview? Oh, man. The, recently, I've been on this kick listening to a lot of podcasts uh, with the CEO of Shopify. His name's Toby. I don't, and he has a, you know, a unique way of thinking about business. Um, thinking about marketing, how they positioned Shopify. And there's so many contrarian takes he has, but he's not abrasive in the way that some kind of 
contrarian CEOs end up being. Um, just seems like a very kind, thoughtful person. So any conversation I could have with him, uh, he has so many interesting concepts that I'd love to unpack. That's awesome. Okay. My last question. Do you consider yourself a perfectionist? <laughs> well, like I <laughs> kind of leaned two words in the beginning. Um, you've got to care a lot. And sometimes that means letting things out into the world a little bit before they're perfectly polished. You can't be always hundred percent comfortable, but everything should always have the ability to get better no matter how good it is. That's, this is actually from the CEO of Shopify. He said, um, I, in 100 years, we'll look back on the businesses of today and say, wow, they're so poorly run in these obvious ways. And he says, right. I bet on a scale of zero to 10, the best business in the world is only a seven. And I bet mm -hmm. we can get it to an eight. And that's all I'm thinking about is, what is the next step for us? And so, yes, I'm a perfectionist, but I'm also a realist in knowing like, yeah, we're probably even the best work I've ever done is a six. And if I can just learn how to get that to a seven, that's my goal. Um, Cause we're never going to be completed. Uh, we're just going to be hopefully getting better. Oh, this is so good. This has been such an awesome conversation and I'm so grateful that you came on this show today. So where can everybody find more about Buzzsprout? Is there any certain platform that you would love for people to get started to learn more about what it is that y'all do and how they can become a Buzzsprout user? Yeah. So buzzsprout.com, uh, I've got a big page called how to start a podcast. And that's a blog post with over a million reads that goes through everything you need to know about how to start a podcast. We've got an eight part video series that you can watch all about podcasting. We've got a podcast version of that series, whatever format you enjoy consuming content in, we have something for you. And uh, if you ever have any questions, I'm Albin Brook on Twitter and I'd love, you know, send any my way. I'd always appreciate them. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again, Albin so much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. So what did you think? Did you enjoy that conversation as much as I did? I felt like it's just so much fun. And I know I said that over and over again, that Albin had so many nuggets of wisdom to share. But you guys, if you want to know all of my secrets, this is what I do. I love reaching out to people who are in this industry, who know way more than I do or have been around longer and getting their advice, asking their opinion. And I encourage you to do the same thing within your podcast industry. Who can you reach out to? Who can you ask for help? Or who can you say, hey, I would love for us to collaborate and talk about each other's programs or products or services or just be able to boost each other up? Because I can tell you, it's so much better when you feel like you have people on your side supporting you than doing this alone. I hope that you find people within your industry that help you become a better podcaster and a better business owner. But that's all I have for you today, guys. I would love for you to subscribe to this show if you haven't already and leave us a review. Tell me what you thought about this style of interviews or if you caught the broadcast live, let me know because I'm looking at doing more of these in the future. Make sure you check out the show notes, crystalprofit.com slash episode 170 to look at all of the things that we talked about on today's interview. You will find the link to Descript and a free free trial for Buzzsprout, as well as some of the awesome resources that we mentioned. But remember, as always, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere. Hey, Profit Podcast listeners, thanks for sticking around a little bit after the episode to hear this special message because I want to hear from you. We are starting a new segment called Fan Mail Shoutouts, and I want to hear from you and I want to hear your questions. What do you want to know? What questions have you been dying to ask me? So here's how to make this happen. Go to the app where you're listening to this podcast right now. Go there. I'll wait a second. Okay. 
Now, once you're there, you're going to see a hyperlink at the top of the episode description that says, send Crystal a text message. And that's all I want you to do. Send me a text. It could be casual, informal. It could be totally anonymous. Or if you want, you can include your name and the name of your podcast or content, wherever you are creating. And I will give you a special shout out in an upcoming episode. So again, go to the show notes for where you're listening to this episode right now. And it will say, send Crystal a text message. And I cannot wait to hear from you and give you a shout out in the upcoming segment of fan mail shout outs. 